In a previous video, I demonstrated a technique for creating an underlying email link derived from a user's actual email address. This allowed us to attach that underlying email link to a field in a visual, so that when we click on the user's name, a new email message is created and that user's email address is placed in the to field. One of the questions in the comments was, would it be possible to also pre-populate the subject and then maybe even put some stock text in the body text portion of the message? If you didn't see the original video that started this conversation, check out the link in the video description or click the card in the upper right corner. But let's see how we can take that question and even expand it. What if we want to pre-populate the CC, the BCC, the subject, and the body text? This way, when we click on a user's name, we'll have all of this information in the email message. We'll start by demonstrating this in a static fashion with very limited information, but then turn it into something dynamic so we can have data be different depending on the person we click on. Let's start with a simple table visual where I have the full name and total sales in the table. Let's go back to the table view, and we can see that we have the full name field and the sales field. It's now time to create that additional calculated column to produce the underlying link information. When creating an automated email message, either through a VBA macro or some other scripting method, there are certain keywords that the scripting method looks for to know what to put where in the email message. The first thing we need is the mail to colon. This is analogous to something like an HTTP colon slash slash that goes in front of a web address. This tells Power BI to invoke Outlook or your default mail client. In the previous video, this is the only component I used to complete the project, but everything after this is what we can use to enhance the project. To begin with, we might want to have a CC on our email message. This will be for the courtesy copy. So the code for that is CC colon. Next, we might want to have a blind courtesy copy, BCC colon. If we want to pre-populate the subject, subject colon. And if we want to have predefined body text in our email message, we'll use body colon. When we get into the body part of the message, if you don't want all of your text to be smashed together and you want to include things like carriage return line feeds, the code for this is percent zero D percent zero A. This would invoke a line break. If you want a blank line between two lines, you'll place this percent zero D percent zero A twice. We'll see this in the dynamic version. But let's begin with the static version. Here's the formula for the calculated column we're going to create. I know it looks intimidating, but once you understand what each element is responsible for, it's actually quite simple. I've broken the formula up into multiple rows to make it easier to identify the components and understand their purpose. The bad news is when we write this in Power BI, we can't include those line breaks, so everything will have to be one long, unbroken stream of text. Notice the elements. We have the mail to, the subject, and the body. We'll keep it simple at first, but everything in here is static, so no matter whose name you click on, the subject and the body will be the same information. The email address is dynamic and will change because depending on the person we click on, we need that message to go to a different person. Back in Power BI, let's go up to Table Tools and create a new column. We'll name this column Email Notice Static. Everything that is static must be contained in double quotes. We'll use the ampersand character to concatenate static elements to dynamic elements. So let's begin with a double quote. Like the previous video, we'll begin with a mail to colon, double quote, and then concatenate to that, I'll do a single quote to bring up my tables and fields, the sales data's email address field. Then we'll concatenate to that, and here's where everything else goes into a single set of contained double quotes. Double quote. The beginning of these optional arguments starts with a question mark, and then we just list the optional arguments. Subject, and this will be equal to, and this is whatever we want the subject to say. Each separate element within this mail to string also needs an ampersand for concatenation. This ampersand will serve as a delimiter to separate each optional argument from one another. So we'll do ampersand, and then for the body, we'll set that to equal, hello, comma, and here's where I'd like to put a blank line between the greeting and the remainder of the body text message. So we're going to use that percent zero D, percent zero A carriage return line feed. Now that will take us to the next row, but I want to have a blank row. So we'll skip another one by just placing another percent zero D, percent zero A. I know it's ugly, but it gets the job done. Then we just continue on with the body text of the message. And it's here where I'd like to take the user's sales and have that be concatenated to the end of the body text message. So we closed our double quote to end the static portion of this subject and body text portion. Then we'll concatenate to that, single quote to bring up my tables and fields, and we'll arrow down to sales. And finally, it's just a little icing on the cake. I'll concatenate to that a period. And the period has to go in double quotes. 
So mail to starts this off to declare what type of link it is that points to the user's email address. We then incorporate a static subject line and a partially static body text connected to a dynamic field. Let's go back to the report view. We'll go to our table and under cell elements, just as the last video, we go to web URL, turn that on, and we want to point this to the email notice static custom column. If we hold down control and click on a user's name, our email message pops up with the to field filled in, the subject filled in, and the body text. The only part of this that is really dynamic is the sales total and the user's email address. But let's take this to the next level. What if we'd also like to include the sales rep's manager's name in the CC field, and then maybe also send a copy of this email message to HR automatically in the BCC field? Maybe we'd also like to have a more dynamic subject line, something that maybe includes the month and year for the sales and that change from month to month, as well as a more dynamic body text. So we began with this static version, but now we're going to build a dynamic version, and here's the formula for that. Now this looks incredibly scary, but again, once you break it down into its pieces, it's actually not very bad. Here we're going to use every possible argument to construct our email message. So we're going to have the mail to with a dynamic email address. We'll have the CC that will point to a dynamic field, which is the user's manager's name. We'll have the BCC field set to a static declaration for an email address that goes to HR. We'll have a subject line that has partially static text, but then shows also the date in a dynamic and formatted way. We have our body text, which is partially static text, but also we'll pull the user's first name to personalize it. Add in a couple blank lines, and then have our main message, which is a combination of static text and formatted dynamic fields. One for the date, one for the sales. Back in the table view, let's go up and start a new column. We'll call this column email notice dynamic, and we'll start with the static text, mail to colon, close the static text, let's now concatenate, single quote, the user's email address, then concatenate to that, double quote. Remember, we start this section with a question mark. We want the CC to be equal to, and we want this to be equal to a dynamic field, so we'll close out the static text again, concatenate to that, single quote to get a list of fields, the manager's email address. Concatenate to that, starting the static text again. This is the internal delimiter, so this will concatenate the CC to the BCC, and this is going to be equal to a statically defined email address hr at mycompany.com. Internal delimiter, the subject will be equal to, and this is a combination of static text and dynamic fields. So the static text portion, close off the static text, concatenate the dynamic field, and that dynamic field is going to be month end. Now we'll start with this unformatted, it's gonna look ugly, but then we'll go back and sweeten it. Concatenate to that, back into the static text, internal delimiter, the body portion. So this will be hello, and then we want the user's first name after this, so we're going to put a double quote, concatenate to that, the dynamic field of the user's first name. Concatenate again, back into the static text, we want to put a comma after the user's first name, and then the two line feeds. So remember, percent zero %0D, percent zero %0A. We'll do that again, percent zero %0D, percent zero %0A. And now the bulk of the body text message. We want to show the three-letter abbreviation for the month and the year, so we'll concatenate to that, single quote, the month end. Now this will be ugly again at first, but then we'll sweeten it. And then concatenating back into the static text, double quote, space total two, double quote, and then we'll concatenate to that, the sales field. Finally, we'll put on the end of that, a period. Let's hit check. Now to test this out, we'll go back to our visual, click on the table, go to cell elements, with full name selected, we'll activate web URL and point to the email notice dynamic. Hit okay. Take one of the names and control click, and here's our email message. The to field is filled in, the CC with the manager's name, the hard-coded BC to the HR department, the subject, which is partial static and partial dynamic, and the body text, which is also partial static and partial dynamic. Now, the one thing I don't like about this is the formatting of the dates and the formatting of the sales, because this is just sending over the raw information as it's stored in the data model. So to make these look better, we're going to use the DAX format command to formulaically format them. So we'll close this email message, Let's go back to table view. So here's the first instance where we display a month end and this was in the subject line. So we're going to wrap this inside of a format command. The value is the month end field, comma, but the format string will be double quote, three M's to give me the three letter abbreviation of the month and four Y's to give me the four digit year. 
close double quotes, close parentheses for the format command. Let's do the same thing for this instance of month end that is displayed in the body text. So we'll wrap this in format. Month end is our value, comma, double quote three M's, four Y's, close quote, close parentheses. Finally, the sales. We want this to start with a dollar sign, have commas, and no decimal place precision. So as before, we'll start with format, open parentheses, sales is our value, comma, the format string for this is going to be dollar sign, pound, comma, pound, pound, zero, close quotes, close parentheses. We'll hit check, go back to the report view, control click on a name, and now we have perfectly formatted date and sales information. Don't forget to download the file from the link in the video description so you can see how all this was done, as well as the documentation I've included for both the static version of this formula and the dynamic version of this formula. So let me know what you think about this in the comments, and if you know of a better way to do it, put it down there. I'm always looking for ways to improve the process. Thank you for watching and for your suggestions and questions. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.